Hey guys, I'm super excited about the new feature in Midjourney uh, 5.2 that just came out uh, a few days ago that allows you to zoom out of various images that you create. And I wanted to do a tutorial that would show you how to do an infinite zoom uh, using After Effects uh, with almost no loss in quality. Um, I've done this up to a 3 billion X uh, scale and it really works well. Okay, so let's get started. Um, first off in uh, Discord here in Midjourney, uh, what I did was start with an extreme close-up of something, and in this case an expressionist landscape, oil painting, thick brush strokes. I stylized it at a thousand as you can see here to give the, the computer some freedom and creativity. I picked one of these, upscaled number one, and I got this uh, extreme close-up. Now there is, uh, as long as you're using 5.2, you'll get this custom zoom, zoom out uh, 2x, zoom out 1.5, and then a custom zoom. When you click on custom zoom, uh, what you get, hopefully this works, is uh, some abilities to change the, um, let's see if it'll pop up, uh, the ability to change the actual uh, prompt, which is really important. In this case, I didn't change it. Uh, I actually allowed this prompt to exist, and I made sure to stylize it a thousand. Uh, notice the aspect ratio is one to one, and the zoom is two. You can go between one and two. We're going to keep it on two for this because when we go into After Effects, by having it be double, I can actually uh, use that to my advantage uh, and just type in a scale of two every time I need to. Uh, to make things much easier and obviously the aspect ratio of one to one will also be uh, easier for me in After Effects. Uh, anyway I submitted this and what I got were these four pieces and I upscaled number two as you can see and then I custom zoomed again uh, but kept the same prompt as you can kind of see here and I got f uh, four more uh, choices and I didn't like any of that so I re-rolled it and I got uh, these four and this one had enough of a painting look that I upscaled it as you can kind of see here and then uh, this time I actually changed the dialogue or the prompt to a landscape oil painting uh, instead of an extreme close-up this way it would actually go out a little bit. And I changed the stylized value to 100. That's really important. Uh, this will force the AI to listen more to the words and less to uh, being creative. Otherwise it'll start going into crazy territory. Um, I picked uh, version one, which I really liked. Uh, and then went ahead and upscaled it again, but this time I liked what I had here and I wanted to start something fresh and new. And one way to do that is to say something like uh, a painting of a landscape painting and it'll actually create the frame. Or in this case, an extreme close up of a human uh, pupil. I misspelled it here, but as you can see here, an extreme close up of a human pupil and iris. And by stylizing, uh, putting the stylized value extremely low, like 10, it forces a pupil to and um, an iris to, to end up in the frame whether or not uh, it likes it uh, and that's one way to really force um, the AI to change the outer things and you can see I've selected the first one which I really liked an extreme uh, close-up and then what I had went ahead and did is um, zoom that up again uh, with the following prompt, which was an extreme close-up of a human face. So it gave me the ability to select the face. Now, not all of these worked, but I re-rolled it until I got something that looked like uh, a face or at least an alien face. And with this, I um, went ahead and said, well, you know what? This looks a lot like an alien so and or a human uh, eye or something, but an alien. So what I did is uh, change the prompt to a close-up of an alien face and then I let uh, the AI kind of take over and stylized it at a thousand. It gave me these uh, four choices and I upscaled one and three. I liked uh, number three much better. Uh, this was number one so number three I went ahead and chose and then I upscaled that uh, using an alien 1950s era landscape stylized a thousand. So I'm just showing you what I did so that you can kind of see how I went um, went through using the stylized value to kind of force the AI to make some changes and finally end up uh, with this 
uh, image as you can kind of see here and that's going to be our final zoom point but you could continue doing this forever and ever which is really cool I've done stuff up to 24 30 images uh, which is again a 3 billion uh, X factor of zooming that is possible once I got all the images here uh, uh, selected and that's upscaled I went to uh, mid journey home page here and I selected just the uh, upscaled images that were going to be important uh, for this uh, project. And I selected Open Downloader. And the way you select it, you should have a selection tool up in the upper right hand corner of your home page on Midjourney when you log in. And you can kind of see that once you select it, you click Open Downloader and it will download all nine of those images to your computer. And at that point, you can actually start using uh, those images uh, for this um, next part. Okay, now we're going to go to the Downloads folder, and you can go ahead and double-click the um, zip file that you get, uh, and it'll open up a folder. And when you click in that folder, you'll notice all the images out of order, probably, uh, that we have. Click on the date modified and that will actually put them in order and you can kind of see that all, all of them are there and there's a smooth feeling of zooming in just from uh, spacebar and then the down arrow. Okay, we're ready to go and rename these. Now you could do these by hand. You can rename one, two, three, four, five, uh, or you could use uh, Bridge uh, to rename things. Uh, just open up uh, Adobe Bridge, which you should have. Uh, and then what you do is you go to the downloads folder. Um, you can see I've already done this here and that's number one so the way you do it um, is just open up the um, the images make sure they're in the right order by date created you can kind of see you can flip them around select all of them by shift selecting go to tools uh, batch rename this is a really useful feature uh, change the uh, thing to sequence number as the only choice and uh, if you're doing this for animation you need three digits it's a Oh, by the way, uh, I'm going to start with the number one, and but in this case we're using two digits, so we're not confused. And then we're going to hit rename, and that will rename all of them. And you can kind of see this is PNG one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, we are now ready to go into After Effects, and we're going to start a new project. Like you can kind of see it here. I'm going to create a new composition, which I can do right here. Uh, and I'm going to let this be 1024 by 1024. That's the actual size of the um, composite of the uh, PNG that you get from Midjourney. And I'm just going to call this Zoom Example. And I'm going to hit OK. Now I've got my composition, and I'm going to just double click in this area, and I'm going to go find uh, my folder full of images. And I'm just going to make sure that they are there. They are. So I'm going to select all of those and just open all of those and bring them in here. And you can kind of see one, two, three. I'm going to take all those uh, shift select and I'm going to drag those down into my composition window here. And what I'm looking to do is have the uh, the one that's um, this image right here. I want that at the bottom because we're going to be uh, scaling that up to get into the eyeball and as you can kind of see that's the one that's at sh at the top at this point so I kind of want to reverse the order of these so I'm gonna actually select by name here and make sure nine is on top and one is on the bottom here I'm just gonna delete all these select these and I'm just gonna drag them down and nine is one is on the bottom now and the the furthest zoomed one is on the top as you can kind of see and that's what we want we want the one that's furthest away at the bottom and we're going to start right here now what we're going to be doing is kind of interesting and it's going to be the exact same thing it's just fairly monotonous but we'll start by turning everything off and i'm going to hit the uh, s button to open up the scale for this bottom one i'm selecting the bottom one you can kind of see it has all the transforms there but in order to open up just the scale transform and hit the s button and that'll open this up what i want to do is scale this a factor of uh two so i'm going to hit i'm going to just tab over here and select times uh, multiply shift eight uh two and I'm going to be doing this over and over again. So it's 100, so 100 times 2. I could just put 200, but that's going to show you 200. You can kind of see that that now fills the frame 200. 
going to turn on the, top, the one right above it. And because these fit uh, perfect, because there are two times, you'll notice that when I turn this on, uh, it, you know, it actually looks like nothing happened except it got sharper. Uh, and that's what we want. Okay, that makes sense. Once I uh, have this 200 uh, and I turn this on here and I make sure that it in fact is exactly the same, I'm going to pick whip this by selecting this and selecting it and then tying it to the one right below it. That means if I scale one, you can kind of see it, it'll scale both. You see that? Okay, I'll do that. Uh, now it's pick whipped. And one thing to really sell this is to put a feather on this frame. I'm going to um, modify this composition just so you can see it a little bit better. So I'm going to control click and go to composition settings. Currently it's 1024, um, but I'm going to put I'm going to lock the aspect ratio and I'm just going to change this to 2000 so you actually can see that hard, hard edge line here when we are zoomed out. Um, this way you know that if you don't put a feather here, you're going to see this little bit of a border, right? We don't want that. The way you fix a feather is you select the, the working square and you just double click this little rectangle tool and that will create a mask on the the area that you've uh, selected. I'm going to open up this mask and I'm going to make this 100 pixels of feathering. And that feathers from here, 50 pixels to the outside. Uh, in order for it to feather from the edge to the inside, we also have to shift that mask uh, negative 100 pixels, which is what I'm doing here. And now if we zoom in, you can see I deselect by going away from it. You'll see that there that border is no longer uh, direct there's a nice feathering edge here and you can see that right here you can kind of see how that feathers and we're going to continue this for the entire um, stack here so we're going to start again we're going to go down here we're going to scale this times two so make it 400 now right and i'm just going to shift backslash to center everything so you can see it i'm now going to turn on this next Oh, this is 400, not 800, 400, boop. I'm now going to turn on this frame and you can kind of see that there is an edge right here. So I'm going to pick whip this to the, the layer below. I'm going to double click this rectangle, make some mask. I'm going to open up that mask and put 100 pixels and then negative 100 pixel expansion, which makes it zoom in. I'm going to turn that off and on and see how good that looks. Looks pretty good. I'm going to close this up. Go here, double that times two. Boom. That's 800. Turn on the next frame above here that we haven't worked with. Looks good. You can kind of see it. Um, pick whip to the frame to the layer below. Double click the rectangle. Open up the mask. Add 100 pixels of feather and scooch that in negative 100 and I'm going to continue to do this uh, the whole way up not forgetting to scale anything so times two you can see that if you get uh, a huge number of layers it's easier just to put times two turn this on it looks good uh, pick whip to the layer below it add that mask by double clicking open up the mask 100 pixels and negative 100 and I'm going to continue this in fast forward uh, so you don't have to watch me but that's pretty much the same process so we're going to speed it up at this point And we're putting in 100 and then negative 100 and at this point everything should work so uh, you can kind of see if I uh, change the scale now and zoom it let's see I'm gonna hold the shift key down and hold that zoom you can see if I zoom it down kind of taking a while to zoom down here with this mouse if I just made this 100 
you see we're zoomed out and remember I doubled this or made it 2000 so at 100 we're zoomed out but you can see if I zoom in it'll definitely zoom in nicely to that eye without any loss of resolution so what do we do next uh, I'm just gonna keep this at 200 percent we'll start here and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put uh, a keyframe at the beginning where we want to start which is this full frame here and we're going to be zooming in so I'm going to go ahead and click on the keyframe here uh, I know my compositions about a 55 about a minute long uh, which is a minute and five seconds and I'm just going to scooch my playhead to the end of this composition and I'm going to um, just going to type 30,000 and see how zoomed in we are that's uh, 30,000 zoom but we can get tighter going to put 60,000 and now we're zoomed in 60,000 we can get 100,000 that seems pretty close let's go ahead and go with that um, and now if I were to go from the front and zoom in you can see that the zoom it does zoom in beautifully but notice how fast it is at the beginning relative to um, where it will end up and how fast you want it to go by the time you get here it's barely moving at all if you're if you're zooming in as you can see and that's because what we need for this zoom to really work is a, a different an exponential zoom uh, so the way you do that you select the first keyframe hold the shift key down select the last now I've got two keyframes selected I can right mouse button click here and I go to keyframe assist assistant and I notice the exponential scale and what we're gonna do is select that and what that does is it creates a ton of keyframes uh, that work exponentially so now if I hit the spacebar you'll notice that now um, because of that scaling uh, the zoom is actually working in a more linear fashion right and then you can kind of see it has the same speed at the end as it does at the beginning at this point we're good to go we can export this so we're gonna go to file uh, export and render queue and I remember I made this a 2000 by 2000 uh, pixel um, image so just so you remember that I'm gonna uh, I'll put this as painting zoom and I'm gonna put that on the desktop just for fun hit save and go ahead and render that and what that will do is it will render in high quality 2000 by 2000 pixels uh, the zooming in and the nice part about having it a little bit bigger than 1024 by 1024 is if you bring this into uh, After Effects again or Premiere or something else you can always reverse it so you can start very close on the painting and zoom out so you can do the opposite of what we are seeing here because it'll just be a movie file uh, which is really nice so hopefully this has helped you and again if if you think this is of any value please just subscribe for fun uh, it just takes a second to click that button and uh, hopefully uh, you'll get some use out of this, especially with the new uh, Midjourney 5.2 zoom feature. Uh, one way to finally uh, do some outpainting and some interesting animation effects, um, very Blade Runner in style. All right, thanks for watching and look forward to uh, seeing you uh, on the next tutorial.